Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the session, Address NC, Creating a Continually Updated Statewide Address Dataset. I'm Anna Verrill, a G Senior GIS Analyst and Project Manager with CGIA. I will be moderating and presenting this session today. I am the Project Manager for Address NC. As I begin the session today, please enter the, in the chat. Um, you do actually have to press a button to join the chat. And if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can enter those in there and I'll be getting to those at the end of the presentation. So as a reminder, this presentation is going to be recorded and made available on our YouTube channel following the conference. So once again, thank you for joining me today. Listed here are some of the key highlights I'll be reviewing with you today. I'll be providing a background on Address and C, providing a bit of a status update, and then providing a timeline for where the project is moving forward. Address and C has had two previous standalone data products. The first was created in 2009, driven by the 2010 census, and the second was created in 2014, funded through the National Telecommunications and Information Association's State Broadband Initiative Grant. Within these two previous efforts, statewide schema standards were created and data updates were harvested from the local governments. There was quite a bit of transforming that took place, scripts built to automate some of this work, and extra temp staff were also hired to complete the work in a timely fashion. Following the 2014 effort, CGIA developed a proposal defining what was needed to provide regular updates to address and see, and in 2016, the legislature saw the value in sustaining address and see and appropriated the funds to do so. CGIA has held off on implementing the use of these funds due to the next generation 911 project and wanting to reduce any potential duplication of effort between the two projects. We didn't want to ask local governments for the same data at the same time by similar but different means. We took a step back and decided to delay address and see. In terms of the update status for Address NC, we are seeing the next generation 911 project as the platform to receive address data directly from the authoritative source, the local governments. The full implementation of next generation 911 using the I3 standard, where GIS data is being used throughout the state for 911 call routing, is ongoing and hoping to be completed by the end of 2021. This date includes ongoing delays due to the pandemic. With the next gen project, counties are being asked to provide updates on a monthly basis. So since this is happening and since counties and PSAPs are required to maintain the updates in that system to ensure proper call routing occurs, we are also seeing this as a way to provide ongoing updates to address and see which has never been accomplished in the previous efforts. So since the up, next update and future updates of address and C are so closely tied with the data going into the next generation 911 project, I wanted to provide a bit of background on the status of this project. The GIS portion of the project began in June 2019. The external contractor Geocom was selected by the 911 board as the vendor for GIS services. Geocom's GIS data hub, if you're forming the QAQC on all the required data layers for the next gen 911 project, and it also aggregates these data layers in a statewide data sets. GIS data becomes I3 ready when there are no critical errors found within the QAQC checks and the alley to road centerline match rate is at 98% or above, and all the required layers also have to be uploaded into the system. So as previously mentioned, the project is expected to complete statewide onboarding by the end of 2021. Here is the initial general workflow of the data life cycle in the next generation 911 project. The different colors indicate who is responsible for that step in the process. The green indicates the GIS data authority, whether that be the county or the PSAP and staff within either of those entities. 
And the blue boxes indicate Geocom's GIS data hub being responsible for the step in the cycle. There is a lot more that does go into this, but at a very high level, the initial GIS onboarding process follows these steps. It begins with the GIS data being updated by the data authority. They format this in the NINA I3 standard and upload this into GIS data hub. GIS Data Hub then performs the QAQC checks and sends the reports back to the submitting agency for review and updates. This process continues until they are deemed I3 ready. I3 readiness is achieved when the alley to road centerline match rate is at 98% or above and there are no critical errors. And some examples of critical errors are road range overlaps and data falling outside the provisioning boundary. Once the data meets I3 readiness, Geocom will then transfer that data over into the AT&T database called the EDGMS. They also, as mentioned previously, compile those statewide data sets after each QAQC process is performed. So I wanted to share this workflow with all of you as it is very similar to the workflow we have in place for creating the NC parcels data product, as well as the previous address and C efforts. Since the data is maintained by the local jurisdictions and we consider this the authoritative source of the data, we therefore want to create the next address and C data product from the data come being inputted into the next generation 911 project. This takes advantage of that data provisioning process that has already been put in place. And so once again, I know I'm repeating myself a little bit, but so we're not requesting the data from those local jurisdictions by any other sort of means. So this is a status update map of the next generation number one um, GIS status project uh, progress throughout the state. This was screen grabbed on February 11th and it's already changed. We now have um, a total of 74 counties or PSAPs that are I3 ready. And the top two designations of dark green means um, the the data has reached I3 readiness. The initial stage is to reach that in the GIS data hub. And once that's complete, it eventually transfers over to the EDGMS. So sometimes things sit within the GDH for a little bit um, due to scheduling. So over the next few slides, I want to give you a visual or a glimpse in how things are going with the aggregating of the address data within the next gen 911 project. Um, the image on this slide shows all the site structure address points data that has been currently uploaded into GIS Data Hub. This includes all uploads, some of which have not passed those QC thresholds yet. This next image shows um, a screen grab of what the I3 ready counties looked like about four months ago, in October, November timeframe. I had the screen grab taken. And just to show you the progress in this next slide, you'll see what the progress looks like in early February. As of February 5th, all the data you see on this slide is actually I3 ready. So you can see great progress is being made across the state in terms of inputting the um, address points into the GIS data hub through the next gen project. So CGIA has partnered with the 911 board through a memorandum of understanding to assist with the GIS services portion of the next generation 911 project. This was highlighted in the plenary yesterday. Little bit of detail here, we are providing ongoing GIS support to jurisdictions as well as coordinating alignment with our bordering states. We work alongside and with Geocom. With this partnership comes the understanding that the aggregated statewide data sets coming out of the GIS data hub will be published and used for other statewide projects and or data products. A data governance policy is being drafted to ensure proper governance of any data being shared outside of the next gen 911 project is taking place. And so until this is finalized and in place, no data can be released from the project.
So the Address NC Steering Committee was formed back in June of 2020 and has met monthly since July for a projected um, six months. We, we met for actually seven months. Uh, the steering committee is made up of 17 uh, different members and in the next slide i'll show you who those um, people represent who the, the stakeholders they represent they have been providing guidance and feedback on the things found on this slide listed on the slide the qaqc checks completeness checks uh, the new address and c standard and data products and tools that will be published and these will be detailed on the next few slides Now I won't stay on this slide long, but I wanted to share with you who the Address NC Steering Committee is comprised of. Again, there were 17 members representing local and state government, along with representatives from the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners, the Curissa Addressing Group, and the North Carolina League of Municipalities. So we do ask if you feel like someone is potentially not represented on the slide and has great interest in address a statewide address data set, please feel free to let us know and we will engage with them to ensure that the data standard, the data products and the tools are going to meet their needs. The steering committee was given a bit of background on the current QAQC checks being performed by GIS Data Hub, but it was mentioned within the group that there could be some additional QAQC or verification checks being performed by the individual jurisdictions prior to uploading that data. So to get a better understanding on what local jurisdictions are currently doing, a survey of the local government community was performed. Details of this will be shared on a separate slide. To further verify the statewide data, we want to check this against other existing address verification services, the previous uh, address and C data products, as well as the statewide parcels layer and building footprints and the most recent imagery for the areas. For areas where there are gaps, we also plan on filling in those gaps uh, with data coming from the parcels layer, um, using building footprints and road center lines as um, a verification check on that and this was a very similar process to how we filled in the gaps previously with the address and C um, products in 2009 and 2014. We want to make sure that we are you know making a solid statewide full data set. So stemming from the need by the steering committee to understand the local data better, a survey was created and solicited through the local governments in October. Even though a similar addressing survey was performed in 2012, a next generation 911 survey was performed in 2016. We thought we still would send out another survey since it's been a few years since those two surveys went out. This was sent through multiple listservs and contact listings, requesting two weeks to respond but the survey was actually open for three weeks. We did get great response with over 280 responses. Now, not all of those were complete, but at a very generalized level, um, about a little over 50% were municipalities that responded, a little over 44% were counties that responded. We had um, regional council of governments that also responded at, um, we had eight of those. And we also had six others, which included combined consolidated counties or city county jurisdictions a uh, federally recognized indian reservation uh, and the uh, a couple of responses from the private sector so in addition to verifying who creates and maintains address data throughout the state we wanted to gain deeper insight into the standards they follow the QAQC checks they perform, and how much time they spend on creating and maintaining their address data. After filtering through the responses, a total of 92 unique counties and 129 unique municipalities and or towns responded. Beaufort did respond with the contact information, but did not provide any additional answers following the contact information. So that's why I've listed them as incomplete. A summary report of this survey has been drafted and distributed to the steering committee um, for their review and reference.
So as mentioned, the steering committee has also been advising on what the uh, new address NC standard should be. The steering committee has decided to publish the data in North Carolina State Plain, NAT 83. Let me just go back. Sorry about that. Um, we have reviewed the fields we will be including in this new standard. We compared fields across the previous two address NC products, as well as the NINA standard, the National Address Database schema, and the FGDC content standard. We're also proposing a couple domains for the place type and the placement field. And since this is a framework data set, the new address in C standard has been written up in a document and the next steps for this will be to get it approved by the statewide mapping advisory committee. And then the North Carolina geographic information coordinating council. We will also be ensuring the metadata is fully compliant with the required elements of the North Carolina state and local government metadata profile. So here's the screen grab the worksheet uh, the steer, steering committee used to reference the different address standards against each other to create that new address NC 2021 standard. Finally, the steering committee provided guidance on the end products and tools that will be being published. And here is the initial planned data and tools that will be published in this next update effort. Again, with the idea that these will be regularly updated after the first initial release. Data will be available for downloads, either the full statewide data set and also by counties. We will also publish web mapping and web feature services, as well as geolocator services, which will help for with address verification, geocoding and reverse geocoding. Of course, all of these products will be published through NC One Map. And if I have time at the end of this presentation, I plan on showing where you could find that. We also foresee the need to create a best practices for maintaining address data in North Carolina document that would touch upon maintaining the data to the standards needed for the next generation 911 project, as well as address NC, with the idea that this would be distributed back to the local jurisdictions who are maintaining the data for the next gen project. This is the envisioned workflow for CGIA to create and publish the data updates. We'd start with downloading statewide data coming out of the GIS data hub, formatting this in the address NC schema. We would perform any final QAQC completeness checks that we want to perform, filling in any gaps as well. We would attach the metadata record and publish the data and services. At this point, once we publish the data, we would then be ready to also provision the data to the National Address Database. Oh, sorry, scrolling through my notes and it has me scrolling through the slides. CGIA will determine the time frame for updates moving forward, depending on the level of effort and the ability to automate these. This could be as frequent as once a month or potentially more often. So the goal of this effort is to have an updated statewide layer created and maintained on a regular basis in the future provided by the local governments using a mechanism already in place for harvesting these updates. We began, this is a timeline moving forward in 2021. We began 2021 by concluding the steering committee meetings. Our, finally, our final meeting occurred in January. We then drafted the new address NC standard, which is under final review by the steering committee. Uh, final comments are allowed um, end of business today, if anybody's listening in. Meanwhile, the 911 board staff has been finalizing that data governance policy that I've mentioned earlier. So in quarter two, we will be proposing the new standard to the statewide mapping advisory committee potentially at their April meeting. And if they approve and all is well, we will then move on to proposing this to the GICC in their May meeting. This spring, we will also begin prototyping the data products and tools. In the late summer and early fall, we will begin assembling a testing team to test those tool prototypes. 
So towards the end of the summer and early fall, we do envision all the next generation 911 data to be I3 ready. And we will begin the final data creation and um, creating those final tool products as well. We anticipate releasing a fully updated version of Address NC by the end of 2021. And then of course, we anticipate beginning outreach and data maintenance in early 2022. So thank you for your time today. And before I jump over to look at any questions that might be coming in, I do wanna mention and make one final project update. Some of you may already be aware through other notices that have been sent out over the last few weeks, but to ensure all those who are listening are aware and who may want to follow up on this project with CGIA, I am resigning from my position here at CGIA. My last day is Monday. I have enjoyed my time here working with CGIA and amongst the North Carolina GIS community, but I have found an opportunity that will allow me to be closer to my family in Maine. So I'm moving there next week. So after today, any questions that you may have regarding addresses should be sent to Matthew McClam and his um, email is provided here. And I know that CGIA does not want to lose the momentum that we have gained throughout the last year with Address NC, and they will be trying to continue that same timeline trajectory that I just shared, even in my absence. So with that, I'm going to exit out of the presentation. I might open NC1 map real quick and show you where address can be found on that. And then I'll, I'll jump over and look at the chat. So here is NC1 map, and I'm sure most of you have seen the update that they've recently implemented last year. So on the home page, I am envisioning that they would potentially add addresses to this uh, portion of the direct data downloads options. And very much like parcels, you'd be able to get to all part, all counties and, and then individual counties. That's my vision. Um, we'll see if it's fully in, implemented. And then addresses does have their own data page under data products. And this of course will be also be updated, um, adding in the new continually maintained data product. Okay, so now I'm going to come over and look at your questions. It's been more than, Rich Elkins says it's been more than eight years since I was last responsible for maintaining mapping for PSAP, our PSAPs. Now, now able to view maps outside their boundaries throughout the statewide data. Yes, they can. Um, every, every PSAP that uploads into GIS Data Hub is also provided access to those statewide layers. And do all PSAPs now use Geocom for mapping interface or do different jurisdictions still use mapping packages? which interface with their dispatch call management software. So the Geocom GIS data hub is only for uploading data into the next generation 911 project and AT&T EDGMS system for to implement call routing. It has is not really actually related to dispatch and call management. So that is still managed by the PSAP. And as I'm more of a GIS person and not a PSAP person, I can't really get into the details of that, but I would encourage you if, if you want more details on that, um, the 911 board could provide those details or Geocom could get into the difference in the details. Um, and they they gave a presentation yesterday. You might have contact information if you listened in to Matthew McLam and Jessica Byerman, um, you could reach out to them. So the next chat, just keeping an eye on time as well. Okay, we still have a little bit of time. Might those responsible for uploading data be afforded the provisioning boundaries for neighboring counties or at least all counties that are I3 ready? It'll make preparing seamless coverage of provisioning boundaries easier to accomplish. Yes, there's going to be a process put in place by CGA working with Geocom and all the jurisdictions throughout the state. Um, it is something that's they're working through how it's, it's going to be. Oh, I see. 
Matt already answered that one. Thank you, Matt. I'm seeing that now. Um, I might skip to the next then. Can I find this address data set online? And if so, where? So I just showed you where it's going to be. It's not yet um, completed yet. And thank you, Matt. <laughs> so you're listening in. You've responded to that one too. Okay. I'm just lead, reading these line by line. So I'm, I'm trying not to jump forward too much. So I'm, I'm seeing the responses after the fact. How will you be selecting testers? Um, so we already have a little bit of a list um, from those who were interested in the steering committee that wanted to test things. So we have about four or five people now. And then we were gonna reach out to other agencies that we know will be using those services to have them potentially test. So um, if you work for a state agency and you have a need um, for these, these tools that we're gonna be creating, um, feel free to email Matt McLam and he can put you on that tester list. Thanks, Josh. Um, everybody else just said, thank you. Julie Stamper, I upload to Data Hub and I have never seen access to any other county's data. Um, Julie, I will have Matt McLam follow up with you on that. And John Lay, are these routing locations or address locations point on the building? So it all depends on how the jurisdictions create their address points. Um, right now they are just, um, I mean, there is gonna be a placement type field and that placement field will tell you whether or not that point was created through a geocode or if that point was created by placing it um, on like the center of the building. Sometimes people might put them on the entrance of the building. Um, so we are hoping that we can get that statewide um, attribute populated fully and completely by, by the counties. And if they input that data into the GIS data hub within the appropriate field, it will carry over into the statewide data set. So you would be able to know if, if the points represent uh, a geocoded location or if they're actually on the building and things like that. So I hope that helps you, John, with your question. And Brittany mentioned, I'm curious if private companies will use this resource to verify addresses. We often get questions from residents that company XYZ doesn't have their addresses even though it is valid. Um, I'm, I'm not sure we've thought that far forward, but it could be potentially, you know, we would never know, uh, like who is actually using the data. It's hard for us to really get a good understanding of everybody who's going to actually be pulling this data and using it in their own verification services. So that definitely could happen now, whether or not, uh, you know, like Google pulls this so they can have the data is is another question or whether or not we would need to provide that um i will definitely um present that to the team but um i'm sure once we do get a good uh, regularly update dated product that it would be more widely used by private companies would there be a way to connect these addresses to state maintenance of roads so within the next generation 911 project one of the required data layers is also road center lines. So I do know that DOT is going to be taking that data set out of the next gen project and, and working it in some of their stuff. So I, I do believe you could definitely, um, there could be a correlation there. And once, uh, once the roads are updated with the next gen data and we have this address product, you could compare the two and see, see how well they do. And that's part of what the QA, QC stuff um, that GIS Data Hub is currently performing also checks. So definitely there is a way to connect those. Okay, so we are wrapping up. Um, thank you everybody once again for listening in. And for those listening in that help create and maintain addressing data throughout North Carolina at the local level, we thank you for your input thus far and contribution in the Next Generation 911 project. And we know that the statewide product will be very popular and very useful for many people. 
And up next, we have a break with a demo theater option. And I believe concurrent sessions begin again, yes, at 2.30. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>